Well, how do you two, Monkey Joe here, Monkey Joe's Playhouse? Today I'm gonna go hatless. I don't know why, I just didn't feel like getting up and getting a hat over there. I could have grabbed one, but you know. And I'm starting to get uh, the fuzzies. It's time to shave the head again. But anyway, I digress. Today, what we're gonna do is move some virtual machines around between different hypervisor machines. So. Now that I've got my new media server up and running and I've moved all the drives out of that Dell R710 over to that Ryzen unit that I built, I want to retire that Dell R710 from daily use. In other words, it doesn't need to be sitting there serving out file storage or anything else 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. The virtual machines that I run on it would be better suited to run on the Dell R720. And the main reason for that is, is because the Dell R720 uses a whole hell of a lot less power by about half than the 710 uses when it's at, uh, when it's running virtual machines. So what I'm going to do is show you today how I handle that. Uh, we'll create some shared storage on the uh, Synology flash station. Uh, I've shown videos how to do that before, so I'm not going to go a deep dive into that. I'm going to show you how to connect that iSCSI share up and then move virtual machines from one uh, physical server to another uh, and then we'll retire that R710. It's not going anywhere it's just not going to be a daily driver it'll be reserved I'll spin it up when I need to uh, run lab units or something like that or, or play around with it you know put new software on it whatever so I'm babbling so it's time to get to the video right now so we'll start here on my Dell R720 now what I want to do is move my virtual machines that are my daily drivers uh, over to this server so that I can turn the Dell R710 off. Now, my Dell R710, just so you know, was hosting my storage for my home media, audio, video, etc. And uh, even though I've got those low power processors in there, I just can't see the, the, uh, I just can't fathom keeping that thing running 24 hours a day seven days a week so we're going to relegate that dell r710 to serving as a backup uh, machine i've got a bunch of two terabyte drives in there and i'll show you that during this video um it has lots of ram in there it does have the low powered l5640 processor but I'm going to move all the virtual machines off of it onto the Dell R720 because that one is up and running 24 hours a day. It's running surveillance and other stuff. So, But what I need to do first on the R720 is set up shared storage. So I've already set up an iSCSI share on the Synology FS1018, the flash station. So let's go over to that machine now and I'll show you what I need to do. So the first thing I want to do is bring up the iSCSI initiator. And it's going to ask for my permission to run every time. And I'm going to tell it yes. And then I know our iSCSI is over on 17 because that's the IP address of the Synology flash station. And there it is. So now if I come back over here to targets... I should see a couple of targets here. So here's the target for the Dell, and here's the target for this Dell. This is for the R710, and this one is the one that I want to use for the R720. So I'm just going to highlight that, go ahead and click on Connect, and I'm going to add this to my list of favorites. So every time I reboot this server, then it will come over uh, and reattach this iSCSI device. So I'm going to tell it OK. And then tell it OK. Now the next thing I need to do is go over to Disk Manager because I have never used this iSCSI drive. And we're going to need to, right here you can see it, so we're going to need to right click, bring that online. Right click and initialize. We're going to use Master Boot Record is fine. And once we've done that we're going to create a simple volume. It's going to be 300 gig. I'm going to put it on the iDrive. And we'll leave it formatted as NTFS, and I'll go iSCSI for the 720. That way it's got a, a name I'll recognize. Go ahead and click on Next, and then Finish. 
So now I should have 300 gig where I can store my Hyper-V virtual machines. So if we come over here, we'll see that the iSCSI is now connected. Nothing on there right now. Now the next thing I'm going to do is go into Hyper-V Manager because I want to set that as my default location for virtual machines and for, for uh, the hard drive. So I'm going to right click on there. I'm going to go to Hyper-V Settings. And I'm going to change this D to an I. And apply on that. And hopefully that will work. Let's go look at the I drive now. Yep, and there's the Hyper-V folder. So now what I want to do is connect over to the other Dell and I'm going to start moving those virtual machines that I have over there. Alright, so I'm on the Dell R710 now and I'm going to go into Hyper-V Manager and I have a bunch of virtual machines here that I want to get moved over um, and I don't think I'm going to leave any of these behind I might leave RD01 001 behind I don't need that one right now I'm going to move the domain controller for Anki Joe's Playhouse this is my web server it's my Ubuntu server, so I'll move it, I'll move that, and I'll move my Windows 7 machine. So let's move our Plesk server first, and then we'll come back to the one with the checkpoint because we need to consolidate those checkpoints or we're going to have trouble. So I'm going to move the virtual machine. I'm going to move it to the Dell 720HV. Click on Next. Move all the virtual machines data to a single location. We're going to browse to that iDrive. Hyper-V, next, and click on finish. Yeah, they should tell us gigabit 10 vert, next, and finish. And then this shouldn't take too long because it is an iSCSI share. Now, the reason, the main reason I'm doing this, just so you know, is because the, even though I've got the low power processor in the Dell R710, there's no need to have both these servers running 24 hours a day. So the R720 runs 24 hours a day because it's also my surveillance machine. So that's why I'm moving my VMs that I, that I use uh, over. And then this Dell R710 will be a backup server and it'll also be av available to run uh, lab virtual machines if I just want to play around with something and not affect my main operating uh, virtual machines so just FYI all right well I'm, I'm gonna let this run and we'll come back when it's done all right so it took about five minutes so I'll do one more and then I'm not gonna keep you hold you hostage here so I'm just a right click move next move the virtual machine Dell 720-HV move it to a single location go back to the iDrive and Hyper-V select the folder next finish it's gonna prompt me for a network card next finish and then let it run and it's that easy and uh, We'll come back and we'll uh, we'll do the domain controller here shortly. All right, so I have them all moved, including the uh, domain controller for Anki Joe's Playhouse. I just was overthinking it. Instead of consolidating my checkpoints, I went ahead and uh, because there are three different checkpoints on there, you have to answer the question about the networking three times. So, but I got them moved. So let me show you. We'll go over here to uh, let me get uh, the mouse working. Let me go over here to the Dell R720 and you'll see now that Unky Joe's Playhouse is here with all the checkpoints. I've got my Plus server, I've got my Ubuntu server, Windows 10 Pro, and my Windows 7. So now what I want to do is see if these will fire up. So I'm going to go to settings and just verify everything is correct. I got vir four virtual CPUs, the hard drive, the network adapter. So let's go ahead and right click let's connect to it and let's go ahead and see if we can start it up
And mind you, this is running over the iSCSI share, so we'll see some activity on the uh, virtual Ethernet adapter as it loads. Let's make sure I can log in. And there you go, we're logged in. So even though I have the surveillance software running on here as well, as you can see, the blue iris, uh, everything's working fine. Now it is, it's probably sensing the changes in the CPU, so I'm gonna go ahead and restart now. Now this is only a two gigahertz CPU, but it's more than, more than powerful enough for virtual machines and I can come back and upgrade these processors later if I want to but I think the uh, I think this is a good fit for virtual machines because I don't have anything that's really processor intensive other than uh, my web server that might require a uh, that might require a little bit more CPU oomph Okay, so there's my Windows 7 machine, and it's uh, it's doing just fine. I'm going to go ahead and I'll log off of this one. Now, I want to go ahead and get my web server up and running. Now, this one has two virtual hard drives, so and it also uses 8 gig of RAM. So I've got 8 gig of RAM, four virtual CPUs, and then I have a, a boot hard drive and then the hosting hard drive. So... Let's go ahead and connect to it. Tell it to start. Okay, it's a little, a little sluggish on startup. I don't know what the delay was, but we'll uh, we'll uh, boot it up, log in, and. Uh, see if it wants me to reboot for any hardware changes now this unit is not a member of the domain so I'm just going to log on locally to it oh yeah there we go it's my new password I've changed my super secret password and I haven't muscle memoried it yet so you see what these two notifications are yeah I still need some updates what I'm interested in seeing is the IP address it's gotten Yeah, and it should be 5.15. Okay, good. All right. And hopefully Plesk has come up. Let's go look at Task Manager, and we'll see if Plesk is running back there. Yeah, dear web Plesk.com. Okay. Here we go. All right, so we'll let it come up and stabilize. <clears throat> and then I'm going to try uh, shutting it down and restarting it again. So uh, we'll let this come up and stabilize, and then I'm going to uh, try to restart again, see if it comes up any quicker. All right, so it seems to have stabilized. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to shut her down and restart her and get an idea how long that takes. Because remember, our first startup, it took quite a while. But that could have been uh, because of the processors, redetecting the processors. Still our CPU, even with two virtual machines running and the, uh, the uh, surveillance software, because I'm looking to see if there's any lag in my surveillance video. I don't see any. Uh, it still seems to be booting up fairly quickly, so... And this appears to be, yeah, a much faster boot up than previously. So, yeah, it's all good. So we got them transferred over. 
to the Dell 720. <clears throat> now, this Dell 720 is also running Plex, and it's running MB, and that's going to change. We're going to move that over to that Ryzen uh, 1500, uh, my Ryzen 5 1600, sorry. Back, it was my old daily uh, workstation that we moved the drives into. I've got Server 2019 running on that and DriveBender, and that is, I've also moved all the drives from the Dell R710 over there. Uh, and the main reason for that is that box is it consumes about 70 watts of power at, at 100 at full bore when I'm streaming video from it. But uh, normally it idles around 60, 65 watts. So it's a good it's a good fit for that. And then the Plus server will be on 24 hours a day, seven days a week. So that's why I've moved it over to the uh, R720. But there you go. You can see how easy that was. So there you go, YouTube. We got the uh, virtual machines moved. I did have a bit of a kerfuffle there when I went to move the uh, domain controller. Uh, I forgot the steps that you had to do when you have multiple snapshots on it, but it came over and it's booted up and it's working fine, so no worries there. And now I have all my virtual machines moved, backed up to that, uh, or put onto that Dell R720. And then um, I'm going to do a video on Synology about how to back up your virtual machines with Synology. You can do both Hyper-V backups and you can do uh, VMware backups with uh, Synology, another win-win for Synology. But anyway, I just wanted you to see the process that you go through to move those virtual machines around and how easy it is with Hyper-V. One of the reasons I use Hyper-V. So, we hope you found the video entertaining and informative. As always, please give us a thumbs up down below. Donate if you're so inclined. We take PayPal, we take Patreon. Let's talk about Patreon a minute. Evidently, Patreon has kicked so many uh, content creators off their site that they're not having trouble paying their bills. So uh, I'm thinking about uh, signing up with Subscribestar. Um, I don't know that they allow you to use PayPal to pay a subscription over at Subscribestar, but I am looking into it. I know a lot of uh, content creators are moving over to Subscribestar. Uh, we'll keep our Patreon up and running, but if they go belly up, I want to be prepared to have another way for you folks to donate. And I know a lot of you don't like PayPal. So uh, I'll be looking at Subscribestar and I'll make a notice uh, or I'll, I'll send out a notification when we've decided to switch over to that. So just to let you know, I appreciate each and every one of you on Patreon that are supporting me on a monthly basis. It really does make a big difference and helps. We put that money back into the channel. It helps keep us going. Anyway, thanks for coming to see us. Please don't forget to come back and see us again. And don't forget, we'll see you on the other side.